set in the very heart of the Midwest, full of bright young students and brilliant professors, led by the world-renowned psychology department. This outstanding image, however, is being tainted by alleged acts of sexual deviance. Good evening, and welcome to Blue Line. I'm Christine Hansen. Tonight, we will be investigating fraternism, a lesser-known sexual disorder. This paraphilia is defined as having sexual fantasies, urges, or behaviors involving rubbing one's genitals against a non-consenting person, usually male to female. These predators are very difficult to catch because they tend to do this in public places where they can easily escape. We hope to catch the predator that has been terrorizing the women of Creighton University in order to shed more light on this heinous crime. These predators are very difficult to catch because they tend to do this in public places where they can easily escape. We hope to catch the predator that has been terrorizing the women of Creighton University in order to shed more light on this heinous crime. Investigating these vicious misdemeanors are members of an elite squad known as Creighton Public Safety. Here with us today is Head Officer Chance Lakestrong to give us more details. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, well, yeah, so we really uh, didn't know too much about this uh, issue here. Uh, uh, it's been going on, I guess, for a while. So we, uh, we had to get help from this guy on campus, some sack dude, uh, uh, named Huss, I think. Do Dr. Huss. Uh, something like that. Who's Huss? Yeah, Husker. And, uh, uh, all we really know is that this has been going on for, like, the last, I don't know, eight months or so, off and on. And, and then the, the, the dude, the perpetrator dude, is like, you know, a, a, a dude, and, you know, like, average dude, like, brown hair, I think he's got, like, a mullet or something, uh, uh, wears a hat, uh, I, I like hats, they, they make my head feel good, uh, uh, but, but, unfortunately, he, uh, keeps getting away every time, by the time we ride our bikes here, uh, uh this is old Bessie, uh, she's a real beauty, but, uh, uh, I think there was like this group of uh, fratty girls and they had like some uh, uh, dance or something and they got them caught on tape there so we might be on to something. The man on the elevator is the suspected frauder. Soon, our undercover agent will enter the elevator. She fits the type of woman that had been victimized previously. She is wearing a light gray sweatshirt. Halt! Is this the frauder? Will you come with us, sir? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Could you please have a seat? We just need to speak to you for a moment. Uh, can you tell me your name? Steve Verberman. What, what exactly are you doing on Creighton's campus right uh, now? Ma maintenance via elevator. Do you have any affiliation with Creighton University? I go to UNO. You go to UNO. What are you doing in this residence I, hall? I you need a valid ID to be I don't, in this residence hall. Why, let me in. Why, why don't we take this downtown and we'll ask you some more questions there. Is that, is that okay? Yeah. We have rid this campus of its sexual predator. He was charged with a misdemeanor and banned from campus. He is also required to t go to therapy sessions. Let's see how those sessions are going now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kirill, and I've read your case files, but I'd like to hear your explanation as to why you're here today. I'm not crazy. I'm not a pedophile. I'm just here because I have to be. Okay, well, we have some footage and witnesses um, pointing to you rubbing up on unsuspecting women. Can you tell me more about that? I just, I can't control it. I have to do it. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what's going through your mind while this is happening? <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, but then I realize that I need to get away, and I usually don't see them again. All right. Um, we have reports of this dating back to about eight months ago. How long has it really been going on? That probably sounds about right. That's it's when my girlfriend broke up with me. I was feeling really down, really emasculated, just impotent. Not, I didn't feel like a man. And then I was riding the shuttle home, and this girl just kind of bumped into me, and I got instant sexual gratification, and that's the way I've been doing things ever since. Um, one day I just decided to come back to Swanson because my, that's where my ex-girlfriend did live, um, and a girl that looked just like her got on it, and I angled myself toward her and did it on purpose, and I've been coming back ever since. Based on what he's been telling me, I think it's safe to say Steve's suffering from fatherism. These urges have been causing him to stress, and it's been happening longer than the six-month requirement. After the clip you just saw, conversation continued, and I discreetly asked questions to see if it was likely that he suffered from other sexual disorders, which is often the case with fraudism. Based on the personal nature of this interview, we decided not to air it on national television, but the conclusion based on this interview and reports from family and friends is that he does not seem to suffer from any other disorders. Once he admitted that this was a problem for him and that he wanted to change, we began to work on some cognitive and behavioral intervention to treat him. One that we focused on in particular was covert sensitization, which attempts to associate negative consequences with the deviant behavior and with the events leading up to the behavior. So you've written down um, what a typical behavior might be like and what often leads up to that behavior. Can I see it? All right. Um, it seems that this often happens after you've had a rough day at work and are feeling particularly lonely. Could you tell me about these frustrations at work? I just, I hate my job. Um, I'm pretty sure my boss hates me. Um, she makes me do all of this work that nobody else has to do and there's no reason for it. We're all the same level, but no, everything gets piled on me. Everyone else goes to the parties with a date. I'm alone. It's just, it's, it's an awful situation when people get flowers delivered to them for an occasion like that, that usually sets it off pretty bad. Okay, so um, what usually happens after these bad days at work? Um, I find myself on Creighton's campus, um, normally going to Swanson to the elevator, and um, I go up to the top floor, I use the stairs, and then start riding the elevator down, and I wait until somebody, you know, that fits my ex-girlfriend's description gets on. Um, when I see him get on, I start edging closer and closer and closer, and that's when I usually get pretty turned on. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Um, what are all the negative aspects about being arrested? Let's go through those. Um, just the process of getting arrested was awful. If you thought the public safety officer was bad, um, the correctional facility, everyone in the jail was awful. It was, it was a horrible place. Um, I thought school food was bad, cafeteria was worse. Um, I was on the bottom of the food chain. Sexual disorders are, are pretty frowned upon in jail, so. That was pretty awful, and then even once I get out, I had to be put upon the sex offender list. Um, I had to tell my parents. Do you know what it's like to tell your parents that you're a sex offender? Um, my neighbors, everybody back home found out about it. Everybody that I go to school with found out about it. It was it was a horrible experience, and I never want to go through that again. Okay, we'll stop there again. Um, now I just want you to think about um, a nice, happy place. Picture yourself there. Just relax. Get those negative feelings out for now. We did this every time we had a therapy session, and it got him to associate the negative feelings of being arrested with the gratification he was looking for when he rubbed up on those girls. This seems to have been successful, so after a while of therapy, the urges have been less strong, and he's been able to control them. I told him to take this home as homework, where he was told to alternate thinking about the aversive scenes, like getting arrested, with scenes of self-controlled restraint, where he rejects those urges. We practiced in our sessions, and then he practiced at home. Eventually, I will have him practice in the actual situation. This therapy is more desirable because there are not many risks involved compared to using pharmacological approaches such as taking female hormones to repress sexual urges. I'm confident that over time, Steve can eliminate this undesirable, harmful behavior because he wants to. Most cases are not as clean cut as this one. Most frauders go uncaught and untreated. We hope this program has brought you much awareness about this issue. Tune in next week on To Catch a Frauder, where we will head to Council Bluffs, where we have received many reports, such as this one. 911, what's your emergency? I was shopping, and this ginger man came up to me and started rubbing his crotch all up in my business! Where are you, ma'am? The Mall of the Bluffs. I was just going about my shopping business, and he basically raped me in public. Okay, can you still see him?
Nah, he took off like a bat out of hell. Stay put, ma'am. We'll be sending someone your way. Psychology department. Okay, I, I can't do this. this Brighton University. Shit. <laughs> Stop. 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 <laughs> Halt! <laughs> Is this the frauder? Sir, do you mind coming with us? Oops, my finger just got it. Ah! Can you tell us your name? Stop laughing! Stop. He was looking for when he roughed up on those girls. This is being arrested with the gratification he was looking for when. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs>